Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Harmony. I am a twin flame expert helping twin flames around the globe face fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. I want to welcome you to today's series of uh, five part series, The Return to Oneness. Today's part four is the return to oneness and getting into alignment with our beloved, that being one heart, one um, love, and one life. And I would suggest at this point, if you're coming in at this stage of the game, I highly, highly, highly suggest you go back and watch parts one, two, and three, which is getting into alignment with the sacred self, getting into alignment with source, and getting into alignment with divine purpose. Those are some things that are going to be very, very imperative for you to get in harmonic balance with your beloved. And I say harmonic balance because that's not to say that our twin does not come in and we don't do some merging and we don't, you know, unite and even full physical union. But until we're in harmonic balance, we cannot have the fullest, greatest potential relationship that we're guaranteed, which is our reward out of all of these things. A twin flame journey is a personal journey. And it's about the mission. It's not about the self-desires. And that's where a lot of people get confused. And so today I've asked guidance to show me in a very clear, precise manner how to break this down for you and cover a lot of information and funnel it into a short amount of time to be able to let you get some clarity on this. Because this is huge. This is where so many people get tripped up because they want the relationship. They want the connection and they want to skip connecting to their selves. They want to skip connecting to source and they want to skip connecting to their purpose and they want the relationship. And you will not have that at the fullest, greatest capacity until you do steps one, two, and three. And if you've been one of the people that have came into alignment with your twin and even potentially even up to the marriage phase, you will still have shifting to do because as we break down these old templates, the old paradigms are breaking apart those um, old dynamics and we are still having to do this shift within ourselves in order to reharmonize into oneness together. And I'm not going to go on a lot of detail, the background of this energetically, because I talk a lot about this in my book, Twin Flame Codebreaker. I also have a lot of information that I'm going to share with today from a very much more depth in not only the book, but also in the free key code series, the 11 part free code series. So if you've not plugged into either of those two things, I highly suggest you do at this point, because there's going to be a lot of information that's going to really dive deep uh, and take this river that I'm about to share with you and create the arteries so that you can pull and make this full circle. So, now, <clears throat> I'm gonna back out here for one second and just see where guidance wants me to kind of like dive in to this river. <laughs> so, here's the ultimate thing. If if we like want to uh, get into this alignment, we have to say yes to the journey first. Then we also, we have to um, get out of our own way. And then in addition to that, we have to, um, we have to not just say yes, but we have, and not just get out of our own way, but then we have to surrender to the process of this because it's the process that we get tripped up on too because we want to fight that process. We want to, um, we battle the concept of, you know, whether or not, um, you know, we're getting those self desires and ego is the number one thing that prevents twins from coming into full union. And ego stands for edging God out. And that's why until you get into alignment with yourself and source and purpose, you can't fully get into the harmonic balance. So I wanted to mention to you, like I said, the energetic aspects of this. So when we incarnate, <clears throat> we incarnate as 
a, a soul, like a spark, and we spark from a ray, which is where the term twin ray comes from. And when that happens and we split and we spark, we split into two dynamics. And each of us carry a percentage of the whole masculine and feminine energies. And each of us carry an agreement, part of the agreement, and say what virtues we're taking, what lessons we're learning, what our personal missions are. And we're going to go in and out of this journey, of this evolutionary contract. The power of two is greater than one. And so we're going to come through, learn our lessons, come out and leave one at a time in and out of lives, both creating like the uh, experience of the whole dynamic so that in the end you can bring it back together and create the oneness of, of self. But in doing so, the power of two being greater than one, now you share that those um, lessons and virtues with each other so that now you um, two have evolved faster, further, um, and now it's time to harmonize that. And just before you come into that union, you also have to, full physical union, you also have to not only just harmonize yourselves individually, but then you have to harmonize the union together and clear the blocks that have created the two of you along the way um, from being together and letting go of the abandonment and the resentments and all the karmic patterns that you created towards each other. Um, from an energetic standpoint, and this balance of this masculine and feminine energy, we have uh, typically um, as the unit, one will carry 60% of the divine masculine, one's going to carry 40 at this stage of the evolution. Okay, now this doesn't mean it's always that way. It just means that individually you both have evolved so uh, much into the mastery of your own soul that you've evolved enough that coming into this dynamic, one typically carries the heavier 60% masculine and one carries the 40% um, feminine. And usually it is the divine feminine now that's carrying the, that heavier masculine role and the divine masculine carrying the heavier feminine role. And we're doing role reversals here. And that's where, like, as we come together and create this unit, there has to be the harmonic balance of that stabilization. And it's typically the divine feminine that is not giving up the masculine role, which does not allow the, the divine uh, masculine to take the divine masculine role. And so this is why we have to come into harmonization within self and balance, you know, a lot of things higher self, lower self, uh, but a huge piece is the masculine and the feminine energies. Well, on an energetic scale that I've talked about throughout this series and showed you with the little chicken and how the energy works, um, we have the polarities of the masculine and feminine, and as those come into perfect harmonic balance, and this is where the infinity comes in, so as we have perfect harmonic balance, 50% being masculine, 50% being feminine, Right at the intersection of that exchange of energy with the masculine and feminine, there is a zero point field. And now in this case, what I'm going to share with you is we're talking about one complete soul being, say, the divine masculine here on my left side. It's going to be your right side. And the divine, um, I'm sorry, divine feminine on the left, divine masculine on the right, each being in harmonic balance of self unifying together now to like come into a different harmonization together creating complete harmony and in infinity so if we have now a uh, perfect harmonic balance of two individual souls and we bring that together where the energetic exchange of every chakra of the 12 plate template comes together harmonically within the two souls as they merge back into one they now have to parallel and cross, and now that's the term twin souls, individual, coming together, becoming the flame as the, the energy connects. The flame comes from the intersection of the zero point field at exactly neutral, at exactly zero of the energy, and that's where you get the spark and the flame. Okay, so and again, I don't want to go into much more detail than that, but I have a lot more detail understanding those dynamics and those other resources that I mentioned. 
So, but I did want you to understand this is very much a energetic connection. That's why we are called energetic templates. And that's key to know because if you're changing your energetic template in this dynamic, what you do, the other one has to follow because the template torques and turns through this process. And it's like a wheel on a clock where you've got like uh, one, you know, the prongs coming together and say, you know, it's turning and it's going to pull the other one along. So that's why if you go up in your vibration, that's going to pull and create the energetic trail to pull in the divine masculine, pulling them up with you through the ascension process. But typically the higher vibrational twin, when the divine masculine comes in, comes down, the uh, lower vibrational twin, typically the divine masculine, starts to run away, be the runner, but that's really because the divine femme is the runner of self coming back down from the codependency. So we kind of talked about that, but I just felt like it was important to get that kind of cleared up just from a very high place there. So now the key again is this is all in divine order. We are getting our wake up codes. We are waking up right and left. I'm watching this every day of people waking up, including people that have never had a background in any of this energy, doesn't even understand what ascension is. They're getting the codes and they're waking up every day. I'm seeing this because this is, you know, my full-time livelihood of dealing with twin flames. And um, I shouldn't say dealing with, that's not the right exact term, but like being able to, actually it's, I look at it as an honor to be able to experience such beauty of um, like, it, it, I just see it in, it's such a beautiful thing because I see people come to me every day sharing with me their experiences and how I even share these um, revelations or these things that I'm being shown and these templates I'm being shown and these blueprints I'm being shown and, and they share with me that they put them into action and then coming back, they're sharing with me, that not only have I lived this and seen this in action, I have people taking what I've created in this blueprint, taking it and seeing it, putting action and seeing results. That is just powerful. And so I don't take this lightly because I just love it anyway. Um, and I'm in pure alignment here. And um, I, I, I'm just so passionate about it. So I don't even know why that's coming out right now, but apparently it just is. But we, as twin flames, it's a very sacred relationship. This is biblical, you know, and I'm talking here when I talk about the chakra connection and this energy connection and the 12 point uh, chakras or 12 chakra system coming together to create the exact uh, zero point field. That is talking fifth dimensional energy that we've been living in. And I have mentioned that in the Twin Flame Energy Report with the Lionsgate coming up here and all these energetic changes here and, and this uh, heart chakra energy that's taking place with the kickoff of the new moon here in July um, of 2017. This is going to carry through over the next 10 years, this portal of energy and this archway of the unconditional love pattern that we're recreating the templates. And so what I'm sharing with you today, I feel like is a piece of that template that I'm being shown to share to put this in motion. So separation um, is, I've talked about an illusion. So if you have not watched the silence, silence to surrender to the silence and the separation, um, I'll put a link down here because that is a must watch. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that because that has so much and so powerful. But what I do want to talk about is that, you know, I mentioned the number one reason for separation is the ego and edging God out. So as we go through aligning with our sacred self and our source and our purpose, if we're still continuing a separation, this is kind of what I want to hit the high points on today so you understand why. So you understand why you are still continuing some separation. And that being uh, a lot, one of the biggest things is, is, and I talked about this, we have our individual purpose, then we have our joint mission as twin flames when we come together. So it a lot of times can be dependent on, you know, our joint mission. And that um, our, like, when it comes to our mission, one of the biggest 
pieces and the biggest missions of Twin Flames is that we're breaking down those old paradigms. So we're transmuting all the karmic patterns and we're rectifying so many things. So this mission that you have can be dependent upon what you're you're taking on for retemplating the, the planet. So in addition to creating as a collective, okay, the you the uh, unconditional love vibration and shifting that for the planet. We are also then individually how we're doing that, anchoring in and creating new templates to be uh, shifted. And, I'm, and I've worked with clients like this, with this, and I've seen this, this is a pattern, and I've seen. So I'm just there's several, and your individual one could be individual. But what I will tell you is I'm seeing sexual abuse, uh, mental illnesses, you know, a lot of poverty, and like, and I just tell you, like, I have two to three major past lives that have had to be uncovered so that I know what I'm rectifying. And I've, I've came to terms with that. I understand what I'm rectifying. I know what karma I've cleared up from my past. I know what my union's clearing up. I know all about why my union is in representation here of freedom and justice. And I know that I'm from the violet ray and I know that that also represents freedom and justice. And, uh, you know, that being headed up by St. Germain for that ray, not to mention St. Germain governs the whole entire unit of Twin Flames of the Asia of Aquarius too. And that's why I work really closely with St. Germain because of my mission being to help Twin Flames. Um, but you have to understand what you're rectifying. And that comes from some past life clearing. And so I would recommend you ask your guides to show you the heart of your past life, which one it is that you're here to rectify, or more than one, because I know I have a couple, two or three that all sort of link together, but there's pieces within mine that are a dynamic that because I'm doing the expansive work that I'm doing with Twin Flames, I am like really on this high place mission to understand this from so many levels multidimensionally to go share it with the world and i've always been somebody that if i'm going to you know talk the talk i have to walk the walk and so i've walked really every possible scenario that you could imagine and i'm always growing and learning and creating my own awarenesses to continue to expand the knowledge and to continue to update the knowledge so even some of the information that i'm going to share today not only is it coming from some of the past things, but also new awarenesses and also some of the things that are coming up either in, in or one of the next two book series that's coming out for my next two books that I'm also compiling and have information for going forward. There's some of this new information that I'll be sharing kind of in this today too. But another thing I want to say, so, so we're talking about separation. So what's still separating you if you are not in alignment but you, with your beloved, but you are in alignment with self and you are in alignment with source and you are in alignment with your personal purpose? Well, then what is still separating you? Well, it could be the ego. It could be not having let go of control. It could be the fact that you uh, are here to rectify something or yourself and or your union and it's definitely got to do with what your mission contributes to transmuting the past karmic past of these situations that were creating new templates for such things as I mentioned you know the sexual abuse mental illness and my personal one is um, like even a lot of poverty and uh, following the Christ consciousness, but related to a lot of poverty. And now I'm re-templating that for abundance, but it's still the Christ consciousness. And I have been awakened to every piece of this. You will read more of that story coming up in my next books. It's, it's a phenomenal story. I will not even open that door today, but it's amazing. Like I, like uh, just the codes I've cracked to create that connection to why I'm here to create this what I call new world order and why and where that where that came from but your mission is going to determine these things and also determine the timing of your union because if you haven't got these things in place and you don't have your mission going and you are moving forward with purpose and you don't understand what it is your mission is to be doing you're still going to be in separation until you do now here's another thing I'll also tell you there's some twin flames in this that are in separation because of their culture differences 
their uh, country differences, their city differences, and they're anchoring the energy into these earthly planes to pull it in as the power two is greater than one. So one has to be in one, say, country, one has to be in another country. And that's anchoring the energy in, and the separation has to be there until all of this has been uncovered. And so there is like this been this divine anchoring and creating these templates and these grids. And these grids of the universal templates are kind of coming to their own close and as through this portal of this Lionsgate energy, bringing all this stuff into form now. And that's where what we've been doing up to this point is exactly what I'm saying anchoring the energy in and now twins separation and twins is as long as you've done these other parts one two and three i'm talking about or you continue to do them you're going to start to see that separation disappear coming up and that's why i've been showing that coming up through the portal of energy through 11 11 2017 that is going to have an archway between 9 22 and 11 i'm um, 12 22. So be sure to mark your calendar for some you know work with that and continue to work the self sacred self the uh, getting a lot of purpose and also your purpose between now and September. And if you haven't at that point, you're going to have to continue that work. But the universe has stepped up and said, we don't care where you're at at this point. We're going to make sure you get on through. And they're giving a little bit nudges and a little bit kicks. And I'm seeing this with clients that are having things like, and I talk about this in my book, shift or be shifted. You either get to choose to shift at some time or it, you're going to be forced to shift. So I'm seeing those dynamics come up too. So, um, now I'm also going to say, you know, as in the separation and, and this unit aspect and this clearing the karma, we're also clearing generational curses and we're also clearing cultural differences. I even see this with clients too. I'm seeing a lot of the generational curses for my own dynamic, but I'm also seeing that with cultural differences and the twins I work with as well. And the ones that came together too soon, and I said that they're going to step to break apart this template to restructure themselves, to reharmonize differently. You know, I will tell you from the time I wrote my book, Twin Flame Codebreaker, I had five sets of twins that had been hovering around outside of my life, and four of them had already were already married, or at least throughout my long term journey of kind of knowing them, they were married, and I could see from the outside. When this all came together and like along the way, I started identifying their relationships. And when my book came out and they wanted to read the book and, you know, or I connected with a, a couple of them, I just had to say, this is what I see in you. This is what you've been going through. This is, I kind of wanted to reach out before. Here's what this is. Um, a couple of them reached out to me. You know, when I was like, you've been stalking me, <laughs> you know, and another one, you know, like I was like on the fence, like, I really think so. I'm pretty sure. And then I saw like some information um, on social media and I was like, yep, definitely. And then they had reached out to me out shortly after that. And that just sealed the deal. And I said, you know, you got to read my book and here's what's going on. So um, basically what I'm trying to say is, is these are again, like templates and confirmations around me that are going on that I get to observe from a lot of angles and from a long standpoint that helps me understand my job and what it is I do. So now with that being said, people want to get into purpose for themselves and or their mission. That and what they think is they can't do it until they align with their twin or that they can't, you know, for a lot of reasons, they feel like that they need that generator. So in my book I, and those videos, I also talk about the divine masculine being the divine generator and the divine feminine being the divine electric. And the divine generator creates the anchoring of the energy and also is the producer of the energy. And they don't necessarily feel as much of this happening as the electric because the electric can feel the creativity. And it's the merger too that create that spark at that zero point field, and that produce the spark is what produces like the mission from the inner and and that takes this forward. So if you've been in fear of moving forward with your purpose or your mission because you are not united with your twin, you're holding up the process because that's your lesson in this. It's saying you can't, you can't wait. You can't close, you don't close doors, but you can't wait. 
You have to move forward with your mission. You have to stay in alignment with yourself. Otherwise, you're holding, you're the one still holding the whole thing up. So I suggest that as you come into alignment with this 5D energy, that you start to get into alignment with uh, creating a relationship with your beloved in the 5D and allowing that to come through. Now, what I'm going to tell you with that, if you are still operating and connecting to the sacred self, connecting to source and connecting with your purpose, at least part of your purpose, maybe purpose sometimes is the cutoff depending on what your mission, your own purpose is. That's an individual identity. So this again, you can't compare a cookie cutter because purpose and mission will change your dynamic of your own union. Some unions have bigger missions than others. Some, you know, really just came on to anchor into to the planes instantly. Some are already, you know, they may not even know anything about ascension. And this is what I'm saying. They may not know anything about ascension. They may not know anything about any of this, but they're in union. And they're anchoring that love vibration because they're doing that. Where the other ones have a different type of mission. And because of that, they have to work in the 5D in order to, you know, create from the 5D level and expand that mission. Some people have paid that mission forward. You know, and I'll talk more about that in my own experience with some of that too um, in my books coming up. But so you have to identify once again what your mission is and what that purpose is and allow your twin to come in on the 5D. But what I'm, the point I was getting at, if you're in codependency and you're in that addictive personality, you cannot allow the twin to come in at that moment because you're, it's feeding your addiction. So I'm not talking about creating this romance with your twin in the 5D like I'm talking about here. If you're in codependency and addiction, you have to break that first. Once you break that, then you can create, and that means you have to create a romance with yourself first. Now you can create a romance with your twin and get to know their energy and get to feel their energy in the 5D, which will now then anchor that into the 3D. And you can learn to communicate with them through their higher selves when you reach that stage in that plane. But that's only by the time you're getting to this space I'm talking about now. So I want to be very clear here so you don't get that confused. And if you're still having codependencies and you're still having the addictive personality, I suggest you go ahead and just turn this off and go back to parts one, two, and three and keep working that before you get here. Because, and, and you know, and maybe take an overview of this so you know what you're working towards, of course, but don't think that you're going to jump into this piece without skipping those pieces because you just aren't. And if you've been in your 3D relationship, you're experiencing a topsy-turvy and a tip and a twist because now you're being broken apart the template you came into union with them to recreate a new one. And, or I even saw recently like a, you know, couple that had already done all this and now it was time to go into separation to anchor that energy in different countries. Like maybe that it didn't even start separate coming together. It started kind of coming together. Now it went separate. And that can happen too. So if you're in that caliber, that means there's still work to be done, but you have to do it for, that goes back to, this is not a self-desired journey. And we're being asked to let go of the self-desires here. We're being asked to change the world. We signed up for this. That's why we're waking up to our consciousness and who we are and what we signed up for and our identity here. Now, uh, I know that there's a lot in, uh, going around about the 144,000 um, twins. And what I will tell you about that is based on the breakdowns of the 12 uh, tribes and the 12 oversouls and like the concept of how that works into our soul groups and all of that, I can see where all of that in the Bible, it's very biblical. I said, this is biblical. It lines up. But what I'm being shown to tell people is not to uh, be focused on that aspect of it, to let go of that aspect of it. Because what's happening in that aspect of it is creating like a label and a box. Sorry, there was something popped up. I just needed it out of my face there. So um, 
they're, you know, I'm being asked to help teach people to le release these labels and to let go of the labels. That that is what we got to let go of here. And so, and I'll share more about that kind of coming up. So let's talk about like the self aspect for a minute. So like what, what could still be holding you back from this purpose and this mission? Because that's what's going to prolong it. So you're, you have to start, uh, being you connected to the sacred self, like I had said, you're going to have to surrender the silence, see that as a gift. You're going to have to stop waiting and start shifting and embracing the self-empowerment of self. And stop chasing Nemo. <laughs> I have to share this story with you. So I had a situation a while back, a lot of channeling was coming through. And I went into a um, dental appointment that I had, and there was some stuff came through with my son pointing me in some directions of, from his higher self to some things. And he loved the Dr. Seuss books. And so I was sitting down in the dental chair, and all of a sudden I saw the Dr. Seuss books, because it ha was happening at the time. And I went to pick one up, and it said a fish out of water. And then I had a client at the time that was having a hard time of letting go and surrendering her twin and I asked guidance to show me a way to teach people to do it from a simple standpoint and so I went in to get my crown done and there were some things and codes that I'll talk about in my book that were big codes for me so when those codes came through I knew there was something more to that book and so when I left there I said can I borrow this book until I come back for my permanent crown and there's more to the story even after with even a patient that came in right after and all kinds of stuff is really cool, but I'll share the story later. But what I want to share with you is the story that I read, I actually rewrote and it was called two fish out of like two fish out of water. So that fish out of water, two fish out of water. And then I shared that with the client that I was working with um, that needed this assistance to see it from a different angle. And it really clicked with her that day after I shared this with her, when I rewrote the story of A Fish Out of Water by Dr. Seuss. And she sent me a message and the message had said, you know, I, I need to stop chasing Nemo. And I was like, I love that saying. I said, I have to borrow that saying because that's what we're doing with our twin is we're chasing Nemo. And so I want to share with you the re my rewrite version of Dr. Seuss and um, that, um, story of two fish out of water okay um this is going to be in one of my upcoming books so okay so once there was a little girl that went to the fish store and and let me just say one thing really fast this is a very raw version i haven't even edited this this is just like threw up on paper and it will be edited and it will be like repositioned and tweaked and a few extra things but you know there's no time for that now i'm still writing um, but you know, I'm being shown always by guidance. There's no time to be perfect. So I'm just going to rawly share this with you. So I'm going to start over. So once there was a little girl that went to the fish store and she saw, um, and she saw what she thought to be the perfect, most beautiful tropical glowfish. I want that one. She exclaimed with glee. The fish looked back at her with eager, big eyes. It was love at first sight. And he showed her the kind of love that she had never known before. I will call you Prince Charming, said the little girl. What a great choice, stated the attendant at the pet store. I just have some very, very important advice for you. Don't overfeed him. Only just a little will do. Otherwise, if you overfeed him, it could create many issues. That is good advice, said the little girl. I will take good care of him. So she made it her mission to take excellent care by loving and taking care of him and feeding her Prince Charming to give him everything that she thought that he would ever want. So she began to give and give and gave all the food of life, the love, the compassion, the joy, and the happiness. She gave it all to him. She fed him everything she had. And the more she fed him, the more he wanted. And so he wanted more and more and more. 
The more she gave him, the more he wanted. She knew what the clerk had said, but she felt so bad for her prince that it was her, that made her want to get, continue to give him everything that she had. And she, so she gave him even more. It was not long until her prince charming started feeling constricted in this little bowl. So she decided that she, it was time for her to give him more space. And so she put him in a bigger bowl. This will do, she ex excitedly exclaimed. Her prince continued to eat all the food that she continued to give him. And before long, he continued to outgrow the, the bowl and needed even another bigger bowl. So in fact, so big that his tail began to stick out of the top of the water bowl. So the, oh, said the little girl, I'll get even a bigger container. So I'll get some huge flower pots. So she transferred her prince into flower pots. And as she continued to feed her Prince Charming, and he continued to grow, she finally ran out of containers. And so she said, okay, I can fix this. I'm going to put him in the bathtub. And so she says, I'm going to give him a really big open space. He's going to have more freedom than he's ever had or ever thought he could have before. So this is going to do the trick, right? So... My prince is going to live happily ever after here. So she continued to nurture him and she continued to feed him all the things that she thought that he liked. All the while, he continued to grow and grow and grow. And it was not long until he began feeling constricted and confined and he was having trouble breathing. He couldn't even fit in the bathtub anymore. So she said, well, I'm going to turn in the shower and I'll shower you with all the beauty and all the love that I have. And I'm going to know that my prince is being taken care of because no one can take care of him the way I do. It was not long until the bathtub overfilled and the bathroom became flooded. And so the little girl looked around in amazement because she realized that she was swimming around too. And she was swimming in the bathroom and the water was raising so high that eventually she felt like she was going to drown. And so the, she started getting exhausted. And as she did so, something different um, happened as she began to run out of energy. And so she swam as fast as she could and fought the process. And as she did so, she every time she would like try to get back control or think she had control over even of her own circumstances and the, the state that she was in, she would get exhausted and she would uh, practically drown. And so then she remembered how much she loved her Prince Charming and how worth it was that uh, she had been giving him all of these things, all the love and all the love that she projected onto him. So that kept her going. Until finally, um, she was so tired of giving herself away. She had nothing left to give. And she was getting nothing in return. So it was before the little girl had realized it, she had continued to shower and shower all this love and did not pay attention. So the house then all of a sudden also became flooded. And the floor suddenly gave way. And next thing you know, the little girl and her prince ended up in the basement. And now they were in some really, really, really deep, deep water. She could no longer move her prince. And so she, uh, and because of this, he had grown so large from all the attention, the food, and the love that she had projected onto him. And so now they were in big trouble. And so she also was in distress, severe distress. And so she cried out for help. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. I just can't do this. No more. No more, she cried. And so she called on her angels and she said, please help him. Help me be able to get him to a place that is big enough so that he can enjoy life and that he can breathe again. The angels tried to help her, but she could not hear them because the little girl was so busy focusing on her prince 
and making sure that he got everything he needed. Then she began to blame her angels because they did not help her and provide a big enough space for her that would allow him to breathe. One day, after she was so exhausted, she could no longer get up and even check on her prince any longer. And so when she finally got up, she went to a pool of water where he had been placed and she couldn't see him. He was not there anymore. And so she began to yell, where are you? Where are you, Prince? And at that moment, there was complete silence. The pool of water was completely still. And so she sat there on the diving board, looking down, searching in the water for her prince, trying to decide, should, did she have enough energy to even dive in and look for her prince? She was so exhausted. All she could do was sit there in complete devastation and fear of loss. Then she heard an angel whisper, I can hear the rain. Be still, little girl. The rain is on its way. But she sat there in tears. Here it comes, the angel said. I don't see it or hear it, said the little girl. As she cried out, I can't see or hear the rain. You must not be telling me the truth. I don't hear any rain. The angel whispered again. Your prince is in deep blue water in the big sea, and he will return. All you have to do is believe and trust, and your prince will be back. He will come again in the silence of the night, said the angel. So you will be able to hear him call in, call you in the night while you're sleeping. You must go to sleep now, dear. Only then will your prince return. So the little girl cried herself to sleep. She saw and in her dream, she had in her sleep, she had a dream. She saw her prince swimming by her side. They were in a big deep body of water that not only could her prince breathe, but there was plenty of food already provided for him there. And so she would no longer have to even feed him because what he needed was already there. All she had to do was let go and learn how to play with him, not take care of him. When she woke up, the little girl was so happy because she knew that she had dreamt a beautiful dream. And now she knew where to take her prince. And just before she realized it was a dream, she heard her prince say, thank you. Thank you for taking care of me. But all the while, all I wanted was to do is play with you. With you by my side, but you were too busy trying to feed me and give me everything that there was, that there was no time to have fun with you. So finally, now we can swim, we can play, and we can be free because you no longer have to feed me. Everything I needed for my journey is already there and it always has been. So, whew. well, so stop chasing Nemo. Um, you know, what we tend to do sometimes is try to change the dimensions of our tank and you think you're surrendering, but in all reality, it's just a matter of changing the dimensions of your tank. And this is one of the blocks that can prevent you from getting into alignment because you have not fully surrendered even though you feel like you have. I've heard so many times people have said to me, but I've done this and I've done that and I've let go and I've stopped contacting. And I, it's the intention behind, it's the energy behind it that makes the difference. You have to fully surrender and let go of trying to fill yourself up with your twin, but also trying to fix your twin or your beloved. I'm going to talk about the labels here in a minute. So this is important. This is one of the reasons why it's, I was saying that you may still not be in union is because you haven't let go of ego. You haven't surrendered your twin. And 
In addition to that, I said it could be also potentially your mission, your journey that you chose and that you signed up for. And that could be dependent upon which ray you came from. And I talked about we incarnate from specific rays. And I won't go into all the details because that is in my book and also in the um, the uh, key, Loving Free Key Codes uh, course that I put together that you can get plugged into if you haven't got that. There'll be a lot of detail about this in there. But what I do want to say is that our ray is dependent upon our virtue. And so, for instance, in the blue ray of the lowest vibration, that is divine will. And in the second ray, that's the yellow ray, that represents divine wisdom. And the third ray is the, um, the uh, I'm sorry, the pink ray. And it is uh, divine compassion, getting into compassion. And the fourth ray is uh, white, which has to do with getting into peace and purity, the divine peace and purity. And the fifth ray has to do with the emerald ray and divine healing. And the six ray is the purple or the ruby ray, and that has to do with getting into alignment and creating balance, really, and creating balance of and pulling in the feminine side of the energies in order to create balance with a lot of the heavy masculine side that we've been seeing, and then creating unity um, with and that unit, or also anchoring this into the planet. You know, these virtues are also being anchored into the planet. And that being um, that, you know, like I said, we might need to uh, anchor some of this energy for our union. And it's built around these, you know, it, it revolves around these virtues. So like, for instance, the seventh ray is the violet ray. And that is um, for the freedom and justice, which is what I have been connected to. Now, what's important to take away from this is we may have incidences through different lives that we've been in each ray. We have. And throughout each ray of this, um, we are um, we we are incarnated from what I call the white light of God, the, the rainbow, which is where I come up with this rainbow spectrum of you know the rainbow is the put the seven spectrums of the rainbow together creates the white light of God, which is called the color of God, and um, so. Just because, let me give you an example. I've been a healer for a long time, many multiple lifetimes, and a healer in this life. So I've mastered that. So when I look at like what that is and what that represents, it could be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm in the green ray, I'm a healer. But no, it's what I've mastered. I've done that multiple lifetimes. It's what you came here to master in this lifetime. So for me, I know it has to do with the freedom and justice, and, and I know that I've uncovered um, three to four past lives that link to this and every one of them have a different piece for me in it that create a certain piece of the puzzle that I needed to know so I know what I'm here to rectify so I understand my purpose and my mission and that by understanding that and being aware of that I know I'm in alignment with that. When we're ready to know these things and open to reveal these things they come to us. But what I also say is you know um, I mentioned a lot of the People hold off on their divine mission because they're afraid that they need their twin energy in order to support that mission to anchor it through the, the divine generator and the divine electric. And so it takes the culmination of those energies to produce. And that's where you feel that high igniting energy that comes through you by being in the presence or working with your twin or working with their higher self. And it does take that energy. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, like you necessarily um, jump straight to this, like I said, but once you get in alignment with yourself and source, you can then connect and create that romance with your beloved so that now you can pull and anchor that energy through the unconditional love vibration and into the earth, new earth heart language to anchor these energies into the planet, which is our ultimate goal. It's not about the self desires, as I mentioned. So the other piece of that is, um, Along this way, so, you know, the, that might be blocking us necessarily is the fact that we are, we're seeing our perception. Like, we're not seeing our twin for who they are and who they need to be and who we want them to be. 
We need to make our twin a star in the universe, in our universe. And universe is one song. And that's where we need to make sure that we have, you know, and we get in alignment with that because that becomes, you know, our one heart, one love, one purpose, one life. And the silence makes the music. And that's where we need some silence to create the music and all of this and to become one. And being a star only me truly means shine today accepting reality. That's making your twin or your highest divine partner in this lifetime and beloved a um, star in your universe. So I highly, highly, highly encourage you to stop changing the dimensions of the tank. Stop chasing Nemo. Let go of the ego, which is the number one reason that's blocking that. Discover your rectification of coming back to rectify from a past life, getting you connected to your mission and don't wait for, you know, to be in full 3D union to do this because it could be potentially blocking you. And the universe is on a mission itself to be able to pull us all together in order for us to come together to help each other get through this and to make this connection. And that means it might take multiple lifetimes or multiple contracts with other people to get this job done, creating the the energetic connection that we need to do so. That being through different relationships of the soulmates, the karmic relationships, false twins, twin facilitators, I'm showing a twin avatar, you know, our true twin, our true twin experience, and the eternal twin flame experience. And you know, people ask all the time, like, well, can we have more than one twin? And how do I know if this is my twin? And this that's too much information to go into those details here. I will make a um, another video coming up on all that. I will tell you a lot of the information is in the book and in those classes though. So do dive deeper in that. Uh, it's a very, very good resource that I've mentioned, you know, multiple times. Um, but what I also want to say in this is I said in the beginning, we have to say yes. And, you know, I have heard um, a few of the incidences here where uh, people think that we're paying for next lifetime. Well, that might for our twin flame experience. Well, that might be true for some cases, and I've even uncovered more through this whole aspect of, you know, with the rectification and how we are to work with our twin on the other side, if, if our twin is on the other side, and I've had some experiences working with those things and some new revelations with a lot of different pieces of that that will be shared in some upcoming books as to in depth to discuss here. But what, you know, with that being said is what we're being asked is love have no, has no label. Love is love. And we are to ask for a highest divine partner this lifetime and to realize it's already set up and to surrender and get in the flow of that. And to, if we want that, say yes to that. But then if we think it's coming next lifetime, it just might. What do you want this lifetime? You're the co-creator of your own life. What do you choose? Are you going to say yes to this journey? Win or lose, you get to choose. We're co-creating this for our own experience. So are you going to allow that to become in because you're reading something that makes you think that you gave it up for next lifetime? Well, maybe you did in some aspect. Let's say maybe you did give up your eternal twin for next lifetime. That doesn't mean you can't have a true twin experience this lifetime. That doesn't mean that you couldn't be a twin flame at all not experiencing a twin flame journey this lifetime or creating to your best beloved partnership of this lifetime. The whole planet is going up in vibration. The whole point is to be able to come into alignment with oneness of self, source, uh, purpose, mission, and then uh, our divine partnership and then all that is, because we're all just really walking each other home. But it's what you seek that you get and what you choose, really, because what you seek really can run from you because it's a lack of, focusing on the lack of, but it's really more what I'm saying is more what you choose. And what do you choose? I challenge you with it. What do you choose? Are you, are you on board with this journey? Have you got on board with this journey? Like really got on board with this journey and said yes to this journey? Because if you have not sit down and surrendered to this journey, you, that's another space you have to do before you can expect anything with full union in 3D. See the star, your, your twin, your beloved is the star in the universe and lose the labels and 
you know, lose the ego and get in this alignment. But I do want to leave you with um, eight ways you start to see your beloved, your twin for who they really are. And that is see only love. See them through your heart. See uh, them as your teacher. See these things that are happening as obstacles. Then be willing to look at the reflection in the mirror. Be willing to see what lesson is your to learn and to be, let that be open. In addition to that, surrender to the silence. You definitely have to see it. You have to see that beauty in the silence. You have to see this journey as a gift in yourself, meaning that they are giving you the unconditional love by carrying the heavier karmic load so that you don't have to and that you can experience this expansion, this love, this peace, this joy. That's a gift. That was part of the contract. So stop seeing it as a curse and give them nothing but compassion for doing that for you. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, again, I said, you know, see them as the star, then it's all perfect. See it as all perfect. It all is perfect. Change these things in the perception of this. This will help you see your beloved for who they really are and allow you to start seeing them as a star in your universe. Coming into acceptance of them is really acceptance of yourself. Honestly, it just is. We are the chosen ones. We chose to come here. We chose to get in alignment and it is time and it is um, time to bring this into form. It's time to move forward. This is sacred. This is sacred. This is the sacred moment of this journey of being able to reap your reward. And I challenge you to do so by cutting the cord to the anchor that's been anchoring you down, seeing anything other than divine love, divine eternal love in this lifetime. Whatever you see is what you're gonna get. Change your perception. Let the anchor go. Stop chasing Nemo. And you're going to experience the oneness with your highest divine partner. Be sure to share the shine, like, comment. Um, I will post the links below for um, the Surrender to the Silence video will be very important. Also, um, for any of the resources with the free course, don't forget the Lion's Gate's coming up with the Return of Oneness and Activating here in 2017. Um, there are also the 33-day plan I'm putting together. It's just, I see it unfolding. It's phenomenal. You're not going to want to miss that. I will put a link to that below here as well, coming up on August 8th at 8 p.m. 2017. Also know that this is such a powerful thing that I'm being shown that it is going to be going forward to share going forward. So it will also be a resource to going forward um, that um, is going to be phenomenal. So I already see a bunch of stuff coming down the pipe with that too um, after this unfolds. So I can see the direction of where that's headed. But I'll share more about that when it's time. So uh, much love to you. Many blessings. May you always... Face fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. Namaste.